Week two in the best football state in the country. The kids are back in class, and the homework's getting tougher. Geyer looking to avoid an 0-2 start against Dennis. And it's number one versus number two in 3A. Cisco trying to break down the wall. Neil Beasley making a run for the border. The Arkansas border for the DQ Big Game of the Week. And we'll bring you the play of the night. It's all straight ahead on High School Scoreboard Live. We start with the game of the night at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Over 1,000 yards of total offense between Skyline and Arlington Martin. Kylan Johnson to Savon. Rollison. Rollison with 236 yards receiving and three whopping touchdowns. That made it 6 to nothing Four Skyline at that point. Then Johnson will throw the bomb to a very lonely Carlos Strickland. I think you could have caught this pass, Craig Way. He was all alone. Where's the defense? 42-yard TD strike. The two-point conversion was no good. 12 to nothing. Skyline rolling. Late first quarter. De Leon Ward. He'll go untouched for 72 yards here. And Skyline is in control. 20 to 7. He had 224 yards in the game with four touchdowns. Then late in the third. Here comes Arlington Martin. We know about their defense, which they're struggling a little bit with this year, but their offense was impressive. Nick Smith, he runs it up the middle for 24 yards, taking it to pay dirt. That cut it to 40 to 34. Then in the fourth frame, Eric Walker, a 32-yard TD pass to Tyler Wilson. That made it 48 to 47. Martin takes the lead, but Skyline would win this one in the end. With 40 seconds to go, Johnson cooks, uh, cooks up another great play here to Rollison. Closing moments, he gets free, 35 yards and the score. Johnson, 393 yards passing, four touchdowns. And how about Martin, who did it by committee? Six guys ran the ball, nine of them caught passes. Wow, what a win for Skyline, and what a way to start scoreboard live. Rick Renner alongside the guru, Craig Way. The team with the ball last was the one that won. Yeah, it seems <laughs> that happens a lot, you know, when you have those teams, especially the ones that get together at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. There's one going on even as we speak. We'll get to that coming up here in just a few minutes. But there's a game going on right now past midnight. We're going to go live there. We just got to do it. It's craziness <laughs> going that late. All right, awesome clash of East Texas powers going at it in the Pine. Woods, what a great game this was, Tyler and Longview. The 88th meeting between the two schools. JT spanked Plain High. Remember, right out of the gates. While Longview, they lost by 30 to Lufkin. But everybody will forget about that if you're able to win the 88th meeting with the, the East uh, with John Tyler. All right, first meeting in three years, and Longview's won 10 of the last 11. We pick it up in the first quarter. Lobo's up 3-0 when Gio McAllister hits Nick Kane, and Kane will put it down for a 59-yard touchdown run there, and that gives the Lions a 7-3 lead. Then Cordarian Johnson with the touchdown run. John Tyler up by 14-3. Then it's 14 to 10 now. Late last second, Longview quarterback Desmond Chumley makes some chummy about that, but Damian Miller is there with the INT. And then the ensuing drive, Kane gets the handoff, he'll muscle in for the score. John Tyler goes on to win it. How about that? They're 2 0, 41 to 25, the final there. And former Lobo coach, by the way, Doug Cox, inducted into the Hall of Fame of this rivalry series before the game, Craig. Disappointing loss for Austin Westlake last week, losing their season opener at South Lake Carroll 17 14. Doesn't get any easier going up the road to Temple to take on the number three team in 5A. However, Westlake ready to go. Sam Ellinger hitting Reed Klubnik in for the touchdown. And then it's Devontae McClennan coming back. He breaks through. This was a crazy game. It was 34 all at the half. And then Westlake turns it on late. They go up 49 42. Temple comes back, scores bad snap on the extra point try, and Westlake wins it. 49-48, the difference being a bad snap on the point after try that would have tied it. So, you look at the top 10, 
in 5A. Well, top-ranked Alito looks to tumble from that spot. Outstanding program, Bishop Amat from Southern California. They win big, 42 to 7. Tyler poised to move into the number one spot. Temple, we just showed you. They fell. A couple of the other state ranks win. George Ranch, surprisingly, knocked off by a good friend's Wood Ball Club. Leander Rouse falls to Cedar Park. Cedar Park bouncing back from that disappointing loss to Alito a week ago. And Wichita Falls Rider, a tough loss to a good Amarillo Ball Club. All right, we told you about the matchup going on at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Going on right now. Carroll had a 17-14 halftime lead. Then Union High of Tulsa, Oklahoma was up 27-17 before Little Jordan Humphrey. No, that's his he name, Lil Jordan Humphrey. It's not Lil Jordan, Jordan it's Lil Jordan Humphrey. He and he scores. Carroll comes back with a touchdown. Dragons have just kicked a field goal, and that ball game now is under five minutes to go. Live right now after Carroll recovers this fumble on the ensuing kickoff. Ball pops loose. Dragons sporting the all-green tonight. Carroll gets that, and then... It leads to this, the game-tying field goal, and you see the time remaining. They've now gone under five minutes to play at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, and it's a 27-27 tie, six-ranked team in Class 6A South Lake Carroll, tied with the Redskins of Union High School of Tulsa, Oklahoma. If they can pull this out, this is a huge thing for South Lake Carroll. You beat Todd Dodge, your former coach that, you know, had all those great titles in that great span where they lost one game, four titles in five years in the opener, and then to pull this win off, off over an Oklahoma power would be amazing out of the gates because we've all kind of wondered how good South Lake Carroll is. Right, and I think we'll find out a little bit more about them as it goes through. They are going to be the prohibitive favorite in their district, but this is important, as you mentioned, Rick, to be able to come back. They had a 17-14 halftime lead, and then Union had a big sprint in the third quarter to go up 27-17. Carroll coming back with 10 unanswered. So, now it's tied. Under five minutes to go. We'll keep everybody posted. Let's take a break. Coming up, as we continue this big party on Scoreboard Live, up next, the Mavericks of Madison in a huge one with Austin Bowie. The Mavs working without their legendary coach, Jim Streety. Would the state semifinalist be the same? Plus, Brasses Valley, big country, and the number one team against the number two team in the state. You don't want to miss it. It's next. Okay, Sport Tough sales event by DQ, the stop sign of Texas. For the best treats, eats, and drinks in Texas, stop at DQ. And by State Farm. Visit texas.statefarm.com to get to a better state. All right, we showed you just moments ago, South Lake Carroll tying it with Tulsa Union. Back comes Union. You see the time, under three minutes to go. Union marches it right back down the field. Redskins score, and now Union is back up. 34-27, under three minutes remaining there at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Cameron Yo, last week, a defending state champion, knocked off as they were beat by Conley High of the Waco area, and so taking on a traditional Super Centex region school, actually right on the border there with the Brazos Valley, of course, and that's Lexington, the Eagles. But Yo was driving early on as Trayon Smith cuts his way through the defense in for the touchdown. He was a big part of the Yeoman State Championship run a year ago. Later on, it's Reed Nickerson, quarterback keeper, in for the score there, and then going to the defense with the Eagles trying to Move it around the corner. Nice long touchdown run, but too little too late as the sixth ranked team. Yo wins it 47 to 13. Well, we saw last year Cisco complete its destiny, win a state championship. We also saw Wall, coached by Houston Guy, make a Cinderella run all the way to the state championship round before they fell to the aforementioned Yeoman of Cameron. So the two would get together. First ever meeting between Houston Guys Ball Club as those Wall Hawks would be taking on Brent West, Cisco Lobos, playing in San Angelo. Five minutes to go in the first quarter. Scoreless. Wall on the move as Bryce Tepersky loses it, and it's Cody Hoover with that acrobatic interception. Still no score. Then, 10 minutes to go in the half. Again, I hand off, and Clint Masters muscles his way in. It's 7 0 Wall. Under two minutes to go in the half, and it's Tepersky. Tired of handing it off, keeps himself, takes it in. But Cisco, a late run, and the defending state champs win it 33-27.
Well, Craig, last year, San Antonio Madison rolled into the state semifinals. And with one of the winningest coaches of all time, Jim Streety, nothing would surprise us, right? But nowadays, Streety is the athletic director at New Braunfels. And another Texas legend in Mark Smith from Converse Judson takes over the controls. The last thing you want to do in a new gig is start 0-2. And, and that's what Austin Bowie was trying to hand the Mavs early on. Madison starts things off with Alex Ardwan. 79-yard touchdown run, and the Mavs are looking good early, but Bowie would rally after a slow start. Quarterback Preston Wheeler finds Ben Cedarquist, who cuts across the middle and gets in for the score. Look at that beautiful footwork getting in. The Bulldogs take the lead on a 10-yard Steve Johnson TD, and then on the roll again, time catching up to Wheeler and company, 26-yard hookup, and the Bulldogs go on to win it, 40-14. to Madison falls to 0-2. Austin Bowie, by the way, only one returning starter on defense. Nice win for Jeff Abel's ball club after coming off a disappointing one-point loss a week ago to Pflugerville. We take you to Lake Travis and Coppers Cove, where Charlie Brewer would have a monster game. And on this play, he connects on the bomb to Hudson Fife, who makes a few defenders miss on his way to the promised land. Beautiful blocking as well, got in the way there. Brewer would remain on fire. And remember, he wasn't even supposed to be the starter this year. Again, connecting to Green, the deep throw. Green doing the rest. The Cavs would lead the Dogs 23 to nothing at the half. So the second frame we go. Yeah, more of the same as Brewer connects with Colton Bailey and the touchdown. Blake Travis would go on to win it 47 to 16. Pretty impressive stuff as they bounce back from the midway loss where they had three starters out, including the projected number one quarterback. They got some issues there because Brewer is doing pretty darn well. You're right, Dominic DeGalera was the projected number one quarterback, but Charlie Brewer continuing that Brewer family tradition of strong quarterback play. Of course, older brother Michael led the Cavs to a couple of state championships. He's now a quarterback in Virginia Tech, and Charlie Brewer leading. It's a big bounce back, as you mentioned, for Hank Carter's team. Break time on Scoreboard Live. Coming up next, it's off to the DF Dub. Our first look at Highland Park. Corbett Smith of the Dallas Morning News will chime in. He was at that crazy Skyline Arlington Martin game after this. Late stages here. You see the time. South Lake Carroll trying to answer. And the pass into Farrar for a score. Now waiting to see. There's a flag on the play. If the play stands, the and they have the counted 12. the touchdown. Farrar, so the play is stood. Touchdown. South Lake Carroll with a minute 21 to go. An extra point away from tying it yet again with Tulsa Union. We'll keep you posted on that. Meanwhile, back to the North Central Texas area. And that means Highland Park stepping up to 6A this year and taking on Pulaski Academy from Little Rock, Arkansas. Here's one of the better quarterbacks in the air, Brooks Bergen. On the roll, looking downfield, the fellow senior Campbell Brooks. Nice catch, tight roping at the sidelines, 59 yards for the score, 14-0 Scots early. Pulaski head coach Kevin Kelly, known for his different philosophies, often uses two quarterbacks in the same formation. Here, Trey Bruce throwing a touchdown pass to Will Hastings. Coach Kelly also almost always goes for two. Does it here? Will Hepley, the conversion pass in. Velasquez rallies go up 28-14. The other thing about Coach Kelly, he always onside kicks. No recovery there, however. And then Pulaski back on offense. More double quarterback formations, but this pass picked off. And then Mitchell Kopp and downfield, and the Scots storming back does Highland Park in this one, in this matchup. And Highland Park wins it 48-42. Update on the South Lake Carroll game. They get the extra point. It's 34 all now around the minute mark there at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Let's bring in Corbett Smith of the Dallas Morning News. He was at that crazy Skyline DeSoto game before the South Lake Carroll game where we saw over 1,000 total yards and 100 points at Jerry World in a Skyline win. Corbett, you predict a lot of things right. Did you see this coming at all? I thought it was going to be a high-scoring game, but uh, yeah, I was I was surprised with the way that Martin punched back. Skyline's got a lot of pieces on that offense. When you look at you know what they've got at running back, DeLeon Ward is a is a really explosive scat back, and and he can really go. And he broke some really long touchdown runs. 
you know, one of their best receivers is just kind of getting started, and uh, that should scare a lot of people. Carlos Strickland has had a groin injury, and he played a little bit, caught a touchdown pass tonight, but he certainly wasn't the, the star. That, uh, of course, was uh, Savon Rollison. He was phenomenal and uh, caught the first touchdown uh, on the very first play of the game, and then on their last play of the game, uh, he broke a tackle and, and ran for, for the game-winning touchdown. Really impressive performance by them. Martin, though, really showed something to me. They, they punched back, and and, uh, you know, took that lead in the fourth quarter. Uh, Bob Wager's kids are, are, are really scrappy. And I think that uh, given the fact that they're now two West Texas districts, you're looking at the fact that they can easily go three rounds deep because they get to that first round. In the first round game, they're going to play uh, a team from West Texas. Then they'll play a team from the El Paso Panhandle area. You know, they could, they could easily get to the third round. And I think they've got the, the players to do it. Corbett, the old-timers, and I count myself among those, remember the days when Highland Park was playing in the state's largest classification. Back in the day, it was 4A and the memorable playoff games of Plano and all that sort of stuff. And then enrollment took Highland Park down to 4A after there was the advent of 5A, and they won a state championship. Now you have the advent of 6A, and lo and behold, the Scots are back up in the state's highest classification. What's your take on Highland Park so far? I think Highland Park's been been great. You know, that Brooks Bergen is one of the area's best quarterbacks. They didn't have a great game tonight. They needed other things. Stephen Deeb uh, with three touchdowns in that game. And, of course, uh, M Mitchell Kaufman with that uh, interception return for a touchdown. They, they need other people to play well when they play these better opponents. But I think they're in a very winnable district. Uh, they're, in a, they're in a situation being in Region 2 where I think they could get a little run. If they were still in, in what is now Class 5A, what was then Class 4A, I would pick them as one of the favorites to win a state title. They're that talented. They got really close last year. Uh, you know, that those expectations will be diminished somewhat moving up in classification, but people shouldn't sleep on Highland Park. This team is legit. Thanks, Corbett, for the insight as always. Check him out with David Newberry on Sports Day HS just before Scoreboard Live. And check out the iPhone app, Sports Day HS. It's pretty cool. You can follow along. All right, looking at the top 10 in the largest classification in the state. Allen, of course, going for the three-peat. But how about DeSoto, who got a bit of a battle from that team from Maryland who Euless Trinity waxed last week? Yeah, that happened. You look at Allen. They got pushed by Dutch Fork from South Carolina, but they won that one 58 to 53. Geyer bouncing back with the win over Ennis and figured that would be a tight game. Cibolo Steel, a big win, and they roll. And how about Manville? This was supposed to be a closer game than a lot of folks anticipated. And look at that. 42 to 17. Mavs win it over Galena Park North Shore. Speaking of Houston, coming up next, it's off to H-Town for Klein Oak and Hightower Games. And we'll check in on the funky, cold Medina Valley in the Alamo City. You're watching High School School Board Live. We live for... Let's move it on to the Alamo City area, and that means the Brandeis Broncos taking off those Judson Rockets. Brandeis on the move. Nice pass there. Paul Lozano, the rifle shot to Maurice Falls. 37 yards, hatch and run. It leads to this. It's Paul Lozano on the keeper straight ahead. Broncos lead it 7 0. Later on, it's Dryton Selhu with a nice read. And then the pick. Oh, this one picked off. 48 yards for the score. Brandeis was up 14 0, and that stake the Broncos to a 27-14 win. Meanwhile, the battle of the unbeatens, Alamo Heights and O'Connor, something's got to give. Dalton Banks, pump fakes, wide open. To Greer have no fear? Sheltler getting in there. That made it 17-13 to at halftime. Second half, different story. Jamonte Foster fights his way into the end zone as O'Connor battles back to win it. 34-24 to the final there. Meanwhile, Klein Oak, Cy Creek, game delayed nearly an hour due to lightning. For these fans, it wouldn't damper their spirits. Second quarter, Klein Oak quarterback Jose Blankenship keeps it. He'll go 18 yards in for the score. 10-0 Panthers. Less than a minute to go in the half. Blankenship connects with Austin Davis. He'll go 78 yards. There's such a good coach bunch from Dave Smith and company. And KO gives Side Creek the KO 37-11. Let's move it on down to Fort Bend County. Ridge Point and Hightower. Hurricanes, Panthers, scoreless in the second quarter. Canes on the attack. And watch this one-handed interception. What a great leaping pick by linebacker Justin Jackson. That's worth another look. Look at that. What a great interception. Later, Panthers up 3-0. And it's quarterback Jesse Krebby to the air. And a great catch. It sets this up. Remus Bowler 
takes it. Over for the score. It's 10-0 Panthers in the half. They added a safety. Up 12-0 in the fourth. And the Canes go for it on fourth and goal. But Nico Hollins stopped by Omari Houston. Panthers D pitches the shutout. Rich Point a 12-0 victory. Wow. Well, want to update you on the game at AT&T Stadium. South Lake Carroll and Tulsa Union tied at 34 all. Going to overtime. We'll update you on what happens in that crazy game at the AT&T Stadium. Break time on Scoreboard Live. Coming up next, Mesquite Poteet looks to bounce back as we go to North Texas plus Permian Basin, the DQ big game of the week, and so much more after this short timeout. People everywhere are finding delicious Let's roll out the Bill Ford Tough Player of the Week watch list. These are some of the guys we're keeping an eye on for the most prestigious honor in high school sports. South Lake Carroll's Ryan Agnew has offers from U of H and the Naval Academy. Matthew Merrick, Colorado State and Nevada offers. Mansfield's Julius Lewis is verbally committed to TCU and Sherryland's Sean Landes lights up scoreboards in the Valley. And how about Port Arthur's stud running back, Corey Dalphine, who is Texas Tech bound. Make sure you nominate your favorite player at playeroftheweek.com based on performances on and off the field. And when you look at Corey Dalphine, this kid has all the tools. He was in a big one tonight. Uh, Port Arthur taking on Beaumont Central. And you can see how talented this kid is. He's got the breakaway speed, and he's going to be a fun match for Cliff Kingsbury and company out of Texas Tech, who he's verbally committed to. Port Arthur Memorial went on to win the game 17 to 14, but what an effort by a guy we're going to keep an eye on on the Player of the Week watch list. Well, we roll on with an interesting one in Wiley. Highly touted Mesquite Poteet was embarrassed in the opener by Lancaster. How about that? Wanted to bounce back against a squad that's really good in Wiley East. Poteet has two of the most highly really recruited kids in the Metroplex in Malik the Freak Jefferson and superstar DeAndre McNeil, two guys who haven't committed. But how about this guy, Walker Don Jr.? He's on the dawn of another touchdown. It's a 50-yard run, 7-0 Poteet. Then Wiley East's quarterback sensation, Braden Shoemake getting in, and more Walker Don Jr. He's got the wheels, and he, all he needs is a little space. He's kind of like Tyreek the free kill up there at Oklahoma State. You give him some space, and he is gone, and they go on to win it. Keep your eye on this Poteet team. Remember, they made it to the regional finals to, and lost to Ennis last year. Madison Wagner slows down the fastest man alive, Walter Don Jr., for an interview after this one. Walter, let me take you back to the first minute of the first quarter where you ran the ball 50 yards for a touchdown. How did that set the tone for you and your team for the rest of the game? Um, I think it, I, I believe that we all orchestrated as a team, and the line did a heck of a job today, and we all orchestrated as a team well. Tonight's win was a complete turnaround from last week's loss to Lancaster. What, what do you think was the difference tonight? We played as a unit, played as one team, and we just stuck together, kept fighting. How does this win build momentum moving forward this season? Uh, I think we just got we got to take it one game at a time, and we just got to stay together as a team. That's the biggest part. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Back to you guys. Meanwhile, in East Texas, Chapel Hill and White House, Jackson Allen quarterbacking the Wildcats. Big shoes to fill with Patrick Mahomes going to Texas Tech. Reggie King making some action there, getting the touchdown. Then it's King again, this time with the TD reception from Connor Hitchcock. And Chapel Hill led this one 15-7. But the Wildcats would fight back as Jackson Allen will connect a short pass that turns into a lot with Shermar Smith. He'll go 80 yards for the score, and the Wildcats, they win it 52-42. to 42.
Pretty impressive stuff. You know, that's the thing. You always wonder when you have a quarterback that's so good, like a Patrick Mahomes who leaves, you kind of wonder how good the team's going to be after that. Right. And we've been talking about how good the lower classification teams are, the ones further down the ladder, like a Gilmer and a Kilgore and a Carthage and all that. But those two teams certainly have more than represented over the past couple of years. And it's good to see them in an early season shootout. Let's take a break on Scoreboard Live. Coming up next, the Ford uh, watch list. And it's off to the Coastal Bend and Texoma. If you keep it where it is. When last we checked in at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Tulsa Union, South Lake Carroll headed for overtime. Oh. There is a touchdown pass in overtime to put Union on top, 41-34. Now the Carroll must complete. respond Number in order to keep the ball game going. We'll keep it going and we'll let you know what's happening there. Meanwhile, to the Lake Texoma region and then further out west on out to Wichita Falls and it's Amarillo taking on Wichita Falls Rider and then for the Sandys it's Spencer Simpson capping the drive a three yard touchdown run later in the second John Hatch 24 yard run nice one there for the Raiders down to the 36 yard line sets up Cortez Carter he'll finish the drive he'll take it in on a 34 yard run but it's the Golden Sandstorms with a win tonight. Sandys beat Ryder 35 to 20. Now, we mentioned the South Lake Carroll game at AT&T Stadium. That's the third of three games. This one was the first one. Earlier today, Denison and Argyle, the familiar yellow jackets, and on the early possession, it's Devon Blatton who goes in. Jackets lead it 7 to nothing. After a Denison turnover, Argyle turns it into points. As it's Gage McCook keeps it himself. Game tied at 7 just before the half. Eagles get another from McCook. Argyle goes on top 14 to 7. And Argyle scores late. The 3A state champions from last year playing 4A. They win it 42-35 over Dennis. In a bizarre district with Dallas Carter this year. Yeah. yeah. You, you got to do your math to figure out what's going on. Now looking at the top 10 in class 4A, only Lamarck is the one that goes down here. And that's the battle of the boulevard, but the old rival from Texas City. Uh, no trouble when you do the math on Stephenville, the road trip down to Coriel County. Uh, fruitful for the Jackets. <laughs> they win it 49 to 6. Navasota, impressive win as they pounded Yates. And look at Graham beating Brown with 40 to 15 in that one. Gilmer, very impressive. Keep an eye on the Buckeyes, as always. And Lavernian, that big showdown with Port Lavaca Calhoun. The Bears take them seriously as they beat the Sandcrafts 35 to 7. Well, here's an interesting one tonight. Tulia and Stratford. Stratford with all the history. But it's Tulia's quarterback, Sandy Nunez. He'll hit cash love, and that is cash money when you do that. He'll get in for the touchdown. They had to work in and out of the raindrops tonight. But this game was all about defense, and we know Stratford can bring it. They win it 13 to 7. In one of the most low-scoring games of the day. Who says it doesn't rain in the panhandle? I know. You get a little bit of rain yeah, out there. Just a little bit. But they needed it down there. Coming up next, Neil Beasley makes a run for the border in the DQ Big Game of the Week. Hey, we love our rivalries here in the DQ Big Game of the Week, and we've got a great one here today. Rivalries a lot like this tasty treat. They are split right down the middle, and they are delicious. And of course, that's what we have, because not only do we have two towns or schools against each other, but two states, Arkansas against Texas. These guys in orange, they're all about Texas High. In fact, this rivalry has been all about Texas High. Arkansas hasn't won since well before these two little cute ones were born. It'll be 14 years, in fact, if they can get the job done tonight. So it's perfect for our big game of the week. It's Arkansas, it's Texas, and it is big enough to be our... AT&T Stadium, South Lake Carroll and Tulsa Union. You're not going to believe what happened in the end of this one. South Lake Carroll down Top seven, the second. and they get a touchdown. Well, we're going we're gonna to try to update that. Um, we're having some issues. We want to show you the play, but we can tell you that South Lake Carroll beats Oklahoma Power, Tulsa Union, 42 to 41. They do so on a two-point conversion. Well, you know, they didn't have to go for two yet, 
but they decided to go ahead and go. In the first overtime, there it is. A little reverse pass right back in Ryan to Ryan Agnew, Agnew for the touchdown. The ball. So How Ryan Agnew on the receiving end of that, and Southlake Carroll wins it 42-41. The Dragons are 2-0, Rico. Very, very impressive. They beat their old coach, Todd Dodge, Austin Westlake. Now take out a Oklahoma Power and Tulsa Union in overtime. All right, we've been talking about state-ranked teams. How about in Class 5A, Cedar Park, despite the loss to Lido, still in the top 10 and taking on Leander Rouse, former district rival, but Rouse now a 6A school. You wouldn't know it now as you watch Cedar Park T-Wolves at it. Jake McCorney to Tommy Levine, 20-7 CP. And then Jeb Guidry with the pick six takes it back. Cedar Park up big 33-7. T-Wolves win it 33-14. Georgetown and Hayes. Down in Hayes County, Georgetown taking on the Rebels. And it's Hayes striking first. It's Braden Kent, the fake, takes it in for the score. Rebs lead it 7 0. Back come the Eagles, however. Ben Bachman rolls out. On the run, finds Logan Hager back in the end zone. 11 yard touchdown. Pass ties the game. Later, Cody Gandy cannot come up with the reception or. Did he? The officials say he did and fumbled it. It was picked up by Brody Sachs. He took it for a touchdown. Yeah, there's an argument there. Neil LaHue said that couldn't be. It was. Georgetown wins at 49-40. Coming up next, the often imitated, never duplicated DQ big game of the week. Texas high, Arkansas high. The 100th meeting is coming up next. Okay. More action out of the Greater Wichita Falls area. Holiday in Winthorst, and it's Holiday Eagles quarterback Levi Draper off the fake. The keeper juggled it, but took it in for the score. Eagles get the ball again. It's Draper this time of the year to Matthew Tiger. And a catch and a touchdown for the herd. Holiday in complete control of this one. Tiger again on the other side of the ball. Picks off senior quarterback Chandler King and will take it to the house. 35-20. Eagles with the win over the Trojans. Craig, I think City View is so good they could score 70 tonight. They were taking on Archer City and DeAndre Jordan with a nice TD run. That made it 6 to nothing. City View. They got a lot to get to 70. Ryan Carr. Hop on that car. Too easy. 12 to nothing. City View. Then it's Carr again. This time from 55 yards out. That made it 20 to 7. The View. And they go on to win it. 74 to 28. They missed a couple free throws later. It would have been 80. Let's take a look at the 3A top 10. And a lot of teams on this list with state championship aspirations. You got a feel for Wall, though, but then again, they lost to number one Cisco, right? Yeah, number one and number two. I'll tell you, the team to keep an eye on other than obviously Cisco, Franklin and Rockdale. Rockdale with a road win over Taylor. But Franklin, that's a big win, and they won big over Madisonville. We told you about Yo earlier. How about Hallettsville? Started off the season number one in the state, and they dropped two in a row. 0 oh, and 2 to start the season. Sonora's Broncos bounce back. They get the win. What in the world is going on? But then again, it's early. We expect them to bounce back. Well, out of all the years we've done the DQ Big Game of the Week, this week's stop is one of the most unique. Folks from three states will cross a border to see it. Texarkana, or as they say in Arkansas, the Arklatex, or in Louisiana, the La Tex Arc. Nothing too good for the gumbo. This year marks the 100th meeting of over 105 years. And when Arkansas High plays Texas High, it looks like it's Longhorns and Hogs on the college level. Heck, U of A actually stole the Razorbacks' name from Arkansas High. Here's Neil Beasley with another one of those Tiger Tales. This week's DQ Big Game of the Week sizzles. Is that the uh, Arkansas High mascot right there? <laughs> yeah, that's right. What's left of him? <laughs> <laughs> Texarkana, Texas High, getting ready to host their arch rivals for the 100th time. And these Tigers can roar. Top 25 team in Texas, 11 of the past 15 seasons. Hey, everything tastes good when you wash it down with W's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But this week, it's all about the bacon when your rival is a hog. Is that a tiger tail? That's that a tiger tail. But at Texarkana, Arkansas High, it's about whipping some tail. We're new to this. You got to explain what is this. Man, this is a tiger tail. You got to eat them to beat them. Tiger tails are cut short round here in orange. Orange, crushed.
Arkansas High is the Razorbacks, literally. Some high schools use the name of the big state college. Other way around here, Jack. The university piggybacked along on this hog ride. Where the Razorback fans at? AHS fans will be out in force, even though this one's not at the hog pen, it's on the road. The home of former NFL wide receiver, two-time All-Pro Rod Smith, looking to make a name for themselves with a win tonight. Hey, a lot of rivalries have a dividing line, a street or something like that that runs right through separating the cities or the schools. This rivalry takes it up a notch, not just dividing line, a dividing state line. Half of Texarkana is in Texas, the other half is in Arkansas. But for the last six years, the right side has been the Texas side. In fact, it's a 14-year streak if you count a tie a few years back. And the Tigers again ready to kick their heels up and do it again. Hey, they're used to drumming the competition. Ever since these seniors were in first grade, the Hogs have kissed these wins goodbye. Even the Fox Sports Southwest girls won in on the action. They're not scared of a good rivalry. <laughs> Coach Barry Norton, 16 years as head man at Texas. 2002, state champs. Arkansas coach Todd Ledford is a Razorback alum, but he also coached at Texas High. All kinds of plot lines tonight. Every team that's still down here before you, you play the First half, all about defense. Texas sophomore Cade Pearson complete, but fumble. Senior Stacy Moss recovers for the Hogs. Then Texas punting. Lavert Paxton on the return. Oh, but lit up by Texas big Will Brown. Ouch. Arkansas minus three yards in the first quarter. Second quarter. Junior Bailey Sprayberry to Stephen Boyce, but zoinks. Jerry Reitner breaks it free, and D. Jones takes it to the zone. The scoop and score. 7-0 Texas High Tigers. But. Arkansas Razorbacks defense has an answer. And it's a draw play to Tom. Balls out. He fumbles. Picked up by Stacy Bowles. It's a scoop and score. Touchdown, Razorbacks. The defense rests. We're tied at seven at the break. I want as physical a football game as we can make it. If you'll do that, we'll win the ball. Yes, sir. I understand. Defense. Yes, sir. Defense. We will not lose this ball game if they don't score. They scored on you yet. Second half, still 7-7, fourth quarter. In fact, under five minutes to go. Pearson passing, hit! Oh, man, another defensive play. Nicholas McMahon was the man. He recovers Arkansas ball. And four plays later, it's third and two. Sprayberry, the throwback to tight end Kyler Nolan. Fools everybody, 11-yard touchdown strike. 14-7 Razorbacks, just 2.50 left in the game. Ball game? No. Two plays later. Pearson needs something. Oh, and going deep to Jerry on Anderson. The Tulsa commit pulls it in. He gone. Oh, my cow. 61 yards, 14 all, and we're going to overtime. Now, keep in mind, Arkansas doesn't play overtime. So, Texas with the leg up. But the Tigers can't score. So if Arkansas scores, they win. Fairly confident that they're fixing to win the game on this play right here. Bailey Sprayberry in the shotgun. Hands off up the middle to Andrew Bishop. Brings the tank with the 21 to the 15. Turn on. Andrew Bishop scores. Arkansas High wins the Eric. Unbelievable. Are you kidding? The 14-year drought over. Arkansas in a stunner. 2014 in overtime. They said that play was to me. I mean, I think we're going to go down and kick it, but I gave that last play my arm. I mean, it, shout out to my boys. Six, I got some good defense, but I gave that last play my arm. I've been on both sides of it, but I, but I feel like some relief. I'm, I'm proud for our people. I'm proud for our kids and our coaching staff. And that's what I did. I just stood back here with a big smile on my face because I like to see our kids enjoy their still. Wow, a 2014 overtime thriller. We may be in Texas, but these guys are in hog heaven. For photographer Jeff Irwin, a a stunner. Now, if they would have played that across the state line, there's no overtime. So that would have been a Texas high win, right? Yeah, it would have been interesting, interesting to see since they go by national federation rules in Arkansas. Here's the other thing that stood out to me, Rick. 
When you look at this, this Texas high, Arkansas high matchup, big interstate rivalry, they play every year. But, and I was going down the list tonight, there were six, count them, six matchups with state-ranked schools playing out-of-state schools. You had, of course, Allen and Dutch Fork, South Carolina, the number one team. And then, of course, that crazy game we just saw the ending of, South Lake Carroll winning over, as they won over Tulsa Union, the Soda beating Eastern Christian Academy of Maryland, Highland Park winning over Pasquay, Arkansas. So one Texas school did beat one Arkansas school tonight. And then Alito falling to Bishop Abad of California. It was out of state week. Well, you, you know why? Because week. they can't get anybody on the schedule. These teams are so good, they got to go out of state. We saw, you know, a team from Arkansas, I mean, uh, all the way from Alaska, play in Texas last week against number one Stephenville. Yeah, because nobody wants to play them. Normally it's the border things that happen, but in recent years, as you've so astutely pointed out, the high level, top level programs are having to play a lot more schools from out of state. It's a good test for them, and it's a good test for those schools from across the state of Texas and outside the state of Texas. Let's take a break. Coming up next, we got the play of the night. I think I know where this one's coming from. That's coming up next on Scoreboard Live. High School Scoreboard Live is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer now for great deals during the Built Ford Tough Sales event. By DQ, the stop sign of Texas. For the best treats, eats, and drinks in Texas, stop at DQ. And by State Farm. Visit texas.statefarm.com to get to a better state. Welcome back to High School Scoreboard Live. Aaron Hardigan here with your rapid recruiting look as we take a glance at the top 10 quarterbacks in the state this fall. Worth noting, all 10 have committed to their schools of choice. Four of the top five staying in state, two to the Big 12. State's number one dual threat, Jared Stidham of Stephenville, headed to play for Coach Cliff Kingsbury at Texas Tech. While third-ranked Chad President has been committed to Art Bryles and the Baylor Bears since last spring. Allen's Kyler Murray, son of former Aggie quarterback Kevin Murray is looking forward to competing in the SEC while remaining in the Lone Star and, of course, carrying on that family name in College Station. As you see, Murray is one of four play callers here committed to the SEC. Joining Cedar Hill's Justin McMillan, West Mesquite's Chase and Virgil, and Bernie's Quentin Dormady. And as Rick and Craig can confirm, all 10 guaranteed to wow this fall, guys, as we keep close watch here on Fox Football Friday. Thanks, Aaron. You talked about Dormady. The coach's son is number four on that list. In action tonight as Bernie hosted the funky, cold Medina Valley. We talk him up, and then we show him throwing a pick six. But what a valiant return for him this year. He tore his labrum in his throwing arm in baseball sliding. Missed all of 2013. Great to have him back. Next drive, Dormady rolling, rolling, rolling. And he makes a great play here. He's one of the best gunslingers in the state. Bernie forced a punt. When they get it back in Dormady, he makes amends, finding Eli Davis on the beautiful, nice flag route here, and they go on to win it 41 to 15. Meanwhile, in El Paso, Eastwood and Canateo. Eastwood and the Troopers taking on the Eagles. And early on, it's quarterback Mark Torres to Aaron Portillo. And he'll get in, and that made it 7-0 Eastwood. Eagles looking to respond. Quarterback Javier Gomez getting it done. 132-22 the final. Midland against Montwood. And first play of the game. Pick six, 42 yards for the score. Britt Bowler with it. Two-point conversion. No good. Dogs lead it. Six to nothing. It was a tough afternoon for Chuck Belize and the crew. Not much to smile about today. 200-pound Darius Reed showing his speed. 40 yards to the house. Bulldogs lead it 20 to nothing after the first quarter. Midland High rolls on to get the win in that one. Yeah, we wondered about Denton Geyer. You know, would they bounce back after the tough loss to Allen last week in a big battle with Ennis? And check out Geyer going deep and getting the touchdown, and they would win in this one, Craig Way. What a great bounce back for Denton Geyer. And we had Coach Ken Purcell in earlier today, and he said, look out for them. They're awfully, awfully good. And they were in that Allen game late. Had a chance, certainly, about that. 2A top 10. Refurio, number one, still rolling along. How about Mart? They followed up the win over Goldthwaite with a big win over Normandy as well. Fall City loses at post going down the road. And Heiko, which started the season highly ranked, is now 0-2 after losing big at Crawford. Let's go to the play of the night. You know we got to go back to AT&T Stadium. Crazy shootout between Southlake Carroll 
and Tulsa Union. And look at this. It's Lil Jordan Humphrey getting in for the touchdown in overtime. So, South Lake Carroll goes for the two-point conversion and the win in overtime. And watch this play. It's a great one as Ryan Agnew will get it done. He catches the game winner from Parker Fentress. Beautiful pass, beautiful play. What a call for Hal Watson and company. And they win it. And looking ahead to the DQ Big Game of the Week next week, we're going to El Paso. Always fun to go out there west. Bowie Bears, Canatia Eagles. We just saw Canatillo, but uh, Bowie and Canatillo in the DQ Big Game of the Week next week. Again, the takeaway from this week is going to be those big-time matchups from out of state, teams from Texas playing teams from beyond the borders of the state of Texas, getting a chance to flex their muscles. By and large, the state of Texas fared pretty well. And how about the crazy games at AT&T Stadium? Yeah. Something about that place brings out the best in everyone. All three of those games were nutty games when you think about that. All three of those. Dennis and Argyle, high scoring. 53-48 with the Skyline Arlington Martin game, and then what a topper in overtime with South Lake Carroll beating Tulsa Union 42-48. And how about the Dragons? 2-0 oh out of the gates with impressive wins to get it done. Well, thanks so much for watching. We will see you next week on Scoreboard Live. We're not even in the district play. It feels like we're in the playoffs the way these teams are playing. For Craig Way, I'm Rick Renner and our entire Fox Sports Southwest crew. Thanks so much, so much for watching and check us out next week from 7 p.m. till mayhem in the a.m. at 1 a.m. and wrapping it up on High School Scoreboard Live. Have a great weekend.